morning. You are welcome to this um, ordinance service. May the Lord bless each and every one of you for turning up. We are going to sing from CGS beginning with um, hymn number 591, 591. We are going to have verses 1, 2, and 5. Verses 1, 2, and 5. 591. According to thy gracious word in meek humility, this will I do, my dying Lord, I will remember thee. For the mic will come forth to lead us. Take five, nine, seven. Five, nine, seven. I will take the first three verses together, sitting down. Five, nine, seven.
song before prayer is 599. 599. We have uh, verses 1, 2, and 4 to take. Verses 1, 2. The fourth, which is the last verse, will stand up to sing it. And after which we remain standing to be led in prayer. 599. Gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful we can enter back into the house of God this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we can commemorate the shed blood and the broken body of Jesus and also follow the Lord in foot washing. We ask your blessing upon this morning as each one of us as we look heaven's way. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have to be among the aristocracy of heaven, knowing that we can serve the Lord of God, God of heaven Bless each one now and the remainder of this service. Throughout this day, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before we um, proceed to the observance of the Lord's Supper and the washing of disciples' feet, I'd like to um, make some comments. Of course, I'd like to start by expressing our appreciation to our Superintendent General and Sister Debbie, as well as every one of you that has taken the time and all the effort you've put in place to be part of this um, camp meeting. We want to pray that the Lord will bless you all for all that you have done to make this camp meeting to run successfully. Should Jesus tarry, next year camp meeting date is already um, agreed, and that is going to run from 21st of July 2018 through to 29. As our usual advice is for all the branches, we want to encourage you to please start making your plans, believing that if Jesus has not come before then, we all love to stay be, um, at the camp meeting. However, I doubt if it will be free, just as it has not been free up till now. Um, in fact, I've been told that the camp fees will go up from 2018 because it has been frozen now by the center for the last two years or so. So um, we're expecting some increase. Um, Brother Ope has informed me of a 
the kind of discussion they've had, so I don't want to make any formal uh, announcement of that until we are sure <coughs> of um, what that will be. And of course, all this will come to you. But you know what? God can perform a miracle. Before that time, God can give us our own campsite. We are still working on that, and we, we have expectation that the Lord is certainly working on it. So um, if we have our own, then of course things will change, and you will be notified accordingly at your different um, um, locations. Well, we have met to look at um, how we can make the CAM meeting affordable somehow. Of course, this is still premature. Um, some meetings may still have to take place with your camp coordinators and representatives at your different branches during the course of the year. But when we met, we have looked at um, some possibilities of um, canceling some meals. Um, Brother Ope actually told all of us last time about the wastage um, that um, we experience from time to time, and that is what we have paid for. What we have observed is that some of us still try to bring our own food items. Immediately, some people get to the dining hall, they just want to see what's on the menu. And once what's on the menu does not agree with whatever they may be thinking. I'm not saying that to blame anybody, honestly. Perhaps I do the same thing. Um, some people don't like pizza. I love pizza so much. Some people will just come in, they see pizza, and they say, oh, not for me. Then they go and find something to eat, uh, for example. And then many things will be wasted. So we are looking at the possibility. All these are just discussion uh, going on. Perhaps the arrival Saturday meal can be cancelled. Maybe they will remove one pound or two pounds. I don't know what that might be. The Wednesday packed lunch, since we have the whole of that day free until evening, we may only request that um, we have just the dinner and then everybody takes care of himself or herself for the day. And, and then maybe another one pound or another 50 pence uh, um, will come out from there. So we are looking at some of these and what we would like you to do when you get back to your different location and then you have your meetings, you too can come up with some other suggestions and, and God can raise someone, as Stella has often uh, uh, mentioned from time to time, if God will bless her with 50,000 pounds, she will give it to the church and everybody can come to the camp meeting for free. Maybe we don't leave that prayer only to Stella, every branch, God can say it will happen from Birmingham, it can be from Coventry, it can be from Aberdeen, it can be from France, it can be from Germany. Once God bless someone with that 50K, well, we, 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 we pay this, by, uh, tomorrow we're going to sign to give approximately about 75K or something in that region to this center for this one week. So if you can give 50K, the church has always been adding to whatever we contribute before anyway, in the region of about 50K. So we just announced to everybody camp meeting is free. But as soon as you do that, the camp committee will be in problem because then there will be no space to take everybody. Okay, so um, um, we are still praying that God will give us our own campsite. And if the Lord does that before that time, we don't need to be talking about all this. Um, some point that those of you that um, listened to Brother Darrell during this kind of a meeting uh, in Portland, towards the closing of Portland's camp meeting, but I brought two points for you, which I think I've already shared during the ministers and workers uh, uh, meeting at the beginning of this camp meeting. But again, I think it's something, in case some of you don't know yet, that you should know. Um, when he said it, he said so that people can be planning towards it. And that has to do with the dedication, uh, the possibility of the dedication of the new headquarters building um, during the camp meeting of 2018. The hope is that by God's grace that will happen, there's a new headquarters building uh, um, in progress, as those of us who are there saw. And it is good for you to know that, in case, of course, you want to be part of that, if that will happen. And then also the um, centenary celebration of the campground and the tabernacle will be 2020. Uh, um, remember during 2006, the 
centenary of um, uh, the church. Many of us went. In case some of you also want to start planning for that, I want to believe that should Jesus tarry, that will be a very big event, and you can start planning towards that um, um, from now. Um, in case you have not heard about that before. Um, I think it was two years ago or last year that we spoke about um, pilgrimage to the Holy Land and the, um, the response was really overwhelming from all over and that's why we had um, I think about 20 or 21 of us that went to the Holy Land on uh, um, that visit. Another one is being planned, being arranged for 2019. Just like we did during the care meeting, we made this known to you and then you start planning towards it. This one too, Lord willing, we are planning that should God give us the, uh, the, the opportunity, uh, the church will still um, um, facilitate the arrangement of um, pilgrimage to the Holy Land, Lord willing, in 2019. So you please watch out for that. We have some major projects that have been in progress. Um, we, we've done a major uh, repair, refurbishment to some parts of the roof work at our church in Birmingham. The planning is ongoing to buy a property in Birmingham to use as a mission house or for investment, as the case might be, as we already have in Manchester and in London. With Aberdeen, the church property that we are renting they have now decided that um, they would like to sell the property. And we've been um, having meeting and um, communicating back and forth. When that got to me, just before we left for Portland, I have to join Brother Ibukum, the leader of our group there, to have a meeting with the representative of um, Church of Scotland to let them know that we are interested in making use of the church, that church building to continue as a church, to which they were really glad. Um, so we are still working on that, and we want you to please uh, pray along with us that um, the property will become ours. Yeah. In Jesus' name, Brother Mark of Manchester told me before we got Manchester Church, they were looking for a place to rent. They went to the church that is now ours to rent just a little part of it, and eventually uh, uh, um, it was out for sale, and God gave it to us. So we are expecting that that God of a uh, God of miracle we do this one too, and we touch the heart of Church of Scotland. They've been in touch back and forth in terms of whether the developer or this our church, and um, we are just hoping that something according to the will of God, will come out of it. East London, we've been looking at a church for sale, and we are proposing to make an offer as soon as um, <clears throat> we have the time at the end of this camp meeting, because the bid is closing sometimes in August, August 10th, I think. We got that letter a um, few days ago. So we are planning to make an offer. We know we've been looking for a church um, that we serve uh, people from that area of London. We have the Southeast, by God's grace, covered. So we're looking for Southeast and some areas of um, Northern parts that um, they can have that. So again, join us in prayers that God's will be done. Yeah. And that. When, when they ask you to make a bid for this, you, you are bidding with um, developers, you are bidding with um, others, and you, you just have to pray. We, in our board meeting a few days ago, we were thinking, what are we going to put down? We, we don't have the answer. But I remember I reminded the trustees that all the churches that God has given us now, we just prayed. Yes. Because when you make use of um, agents, they ask you, I told my colleagues, I said they are like doctors to some extent. They get all the information from you. They use that information to tell you what you have to do. Uh, um, in terms of how much... It, they have given a guide price of a certain amount. They will take that information from you. They look at the area, and then they tell you that this is what you should give. As useful as that might be, we have the experience by God's grace of praying to God and gathering some relevant inf information, and then we pray, we make our offer, just as Bexley, God gave to us. Birmingham, God gave to us. Um, Manchester, God gave to us. So we are hoping that by the grace of God, God will guide us in that as well. 
Manchester still awaiting application decision for the extension of the children's hall. Those of you who have been to a Manchester church will notice that we have our children's hall, but then we have the top level open and we have submitted to the Manchester City Council for, um, for them to grant uh, a planning application to build on top of that so that we have uh, uh, more rooms for our Sunday school children. Actually, in Manchester now, we, because we have that hall for the children, we still use the altar area of the tabernacle, oh, sorry, of the um, um, sanctuary for the prayer room. So by the grace of God, if we are able to get permission to do that, then we have enough room and then we have a dedicated uh, um, prayer room by God's grace. So pray along uh, uh, that line too for us. Peckham and Bexley plan to have galleries. We, we've, we've tried that before. Actually, for Bexley, we have received uh, um, approval when we um, bought the church initially to have the back hall, to have a gallery at the back hall, and we've not been able to do much about that. We are looking forward to do something about that. Uh, Peckham, we have done this too in the past, to have a little gallery like what we have now in Bexley and Peckham towards the back. We have actually worked on that in the past and I think we dropped it for, I have forgotten whatever reason, but now we want to take that up. So please pray for that too. Uh, the current personage building extension, we are making that detached mission house to be a semi-detached. We are building another one by the side of it. The plan when we bought that property was that because of that land, we were looking forward to getting a permission to do so. And God granted that permission eventually. And we have that building in progress now. So the plan is that um, the, the mission house or parsonage will be the new one and the current one will be let out. We join the portfolio of the um, um, investment properties that belong to, to the church. So that is what is happening on that. Okay. <clears throat> I have here some information about our brand churches. We've posted this. I've, worked, I've, I've asked that they post this on the website, but I think I want to use this medium to um, let you be aware of those changes. Actually, some changes that have occurred during the course of the year and some changes that will even happen from today onward. Uh, but I think maybe I will start with letting you know those um, um, branches that we have and groups and things, other places in Peckham, which we know the first ever church for apostolic faith uh, um, in the UK, um, where I'm currently pastoring, uh, Bexley Church, um, where we have Brother Ola pastoring, Birmingham, um, we have Brother Isaac Shodipe as an interim pastor there for now. Manchester, we have Brother Mark. Um, in Aberdeen, well, Aberdeen um, represents the center of all our work in Scotland. Um, so Brother Matthew Ibuku looks after that, but we also have groups all around Aberdeen, um, as I will mention later. We have also in London, um, a prayer and Bible study center. All these groups and Bible study centers, we are praying that the Lord can make them to become churches in their own right. So we have Beckenham, where we have Brother Francis leading that um, Bible study prayer center. Hackney, Brother Isaac Shodipe in London. Chimford, Brother Iparson Upe. East London, Sister Jumake Olajuwala. Coventry, which um, Coventry and Leicester they were worshiping with Birmingham Church before now, and for the sake of expansion and to help uh, um, in other areas, we have requested that um, Coventry they should be apart, Leicester should be apart. They usually travel every Sunday to attend Birmingham Church before, so they now have their own groups. And since they started, actually their numbers has grown in terms of people you know, it's very easy to invite people within the locality to come to church than to say, come with me to church in another city. Um, it would take um, some effort to do that. So for Coventry, we have Brother Muiwa Deemo as the leader there. Leicester, we have Brother Stan Yakua as the leader there. Success, 
We have Brother Ade Akuri Jola as the leader there. Kent as Medway area. We have Brother Shion Aramide as the leader of that uh, Bible study prayer center. Bristol Cardiff, Brother Moyo, Thomas Moyo. Um, for the two churches that we have in France, both Tours and Paris, we have Brother um, Matthew Bobo uh, looking after those two churches, although he has other people that are helping, uh, especially in Tours since he's based in Paris. Republic of Ireland, we have Sister Nikki Adeyemi. Denmark, we have Brother Solomon Akau. Murcia, Spain, we have Brother Yaya Bobo and um, Dele Femi Ismail uh, um, that are looking after the, the group. Uh, springing up, uh, springing up there. Germany, we have um, um, brother um, Steve Obodo looking after our work in Germany. In Holland, some of you will see this on the website, where it says that for information regarding our group in Holland, contact the London pastor. <clears throat> it's simply because we had a group there before, and for one reason or the other. The leader, who of course came from um, the Caribbean, um, some things happened in terms of what she would like to do. She has come to our camp meeting too before. Um, but then, for whatever reason, um, she is separating herself. And so that's why when we have any inquiry from um, Holland, we say that they should speak to us and then we let them know um, that for now we are praying to have our own group there. But not yet. <clears throat> okay, the final part of this comment has to do with um, some organizational structure that we've been working on for quite some time. You will all remember that for the past um, 17 years, um, it's been that um, all those areas that I mentioned, all the leaders and pastors there, they report to me. And of course, I report to Brother Darren. And it has been in my mind for some time to make sure that we are more effective in our delivery and then we have um, some uh, um, efficiency and outreach plans in place. And for ease of um, administration and um, management, that we should really have um, different regions of this area covered under Western Europe to which we have been given, and um, to divide ourselves into various regions. <clears throat> this was, uh, as a proposal, was presented to the Board of Trustees, and they, they started um, talking and we started discussing about that, and um, by God's grace we felt that um, this is according to God's direction, uh, that we should pro proceed with that. Um, we took that up with um, Brother Darrell, to let him know what we are thinking about. Um, during this last camp meeting, I have the opportunity to represent the board, since all the board members have agreed, then to represent the board in a meeting with him to still discuss that structure, which meanwhile, as we are discussing it, I've already sent to him, and we've planned that during the camp meeting we will meet and we will talk more about it. So we met, we talked about it, and once we have his approval, the new structure um, will now be in place. And so we've divided ourselves into four regions, and we are going to have a regional director for each region, they will be responsible for the operation of that region, all the work there, and then they report to me, and then I report to <coughs> Brother Darrell, uh, our superintendent general. The first region here is Scotland, where we have our groups in Aberdeen, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Dundee, and other areas around there. The person that will be responsible as their regional director is Brother Upe. One thing I didn't mention again earlier was that all these regional directors, they are to come from the trustees. They are to come from the board of trustees. <clears throat> the Midland and northwest of England, where we have Birmingham, Manchester, Leicester, Coventry, Northampton, Leeds, Bolton, Liverpool, the regional director is Brother Mark Mfandarawa. 
southeast and southwest of England and Wales, uh, consisting of Greater London, every group in London and the branches, Bristol, Cardiff, Medway, Milton Keynes, Success, uh, um, all those area. The regional director will be Brother Ola Balogu. For mainland Europe, all other um, uh, groups and branches that we have outside the United Kingdom, except of course in this mainland Europe, we have included Northern Ireland, even though it belongs to the United Kingdom. Um, apart from that, then we have Republic of Ireland, France, Germany, Spain, Holland, Denmark. The regional director will be Brother Francis Otuju. Pastor changes and transfers, all to still do with um, efficiency, um, um, good administration, and whatever the Lord will want us to do um, with that. One other point before I go into these changes and transfers is that all those regions that we have mentioned, um, this is the first time we will do that. So the, the way I have explained that to people is to use the example of Nigeria. When, when I was a kid, it used to be 12 states in Nigeria. And then later I remember it moved to 19 states, same country. Then later 20 something states. Same country. Now 30 something, 30 what? 36. You see now, I don't even know much about Nigeria again. Now we have 36 states. And it's still the same country. Not because that's expanded, but for ease of operation. So all those four regions we've mentioned, we are starting off with that. As time goes on, depending on the expansion and as the Lord will lead us by God's grace, there may still be branching out um, from all of this. Um, with all this, we have had some changes that have taken place before now, and we are going to have uh, some that will take effect as from today. Um, Brother Olaba logo is transferred from Bexley to Peckham. Isaac Shodipe will continue to serve as an interim pastor in Birmingham until further notice. Uh, Brother Michael Olabi now joins the ministerial staff in London, while I now move from Peckham to Pastor Bexley Church. In the interim, until adequate facilities are in place in Bexley, the administrative office will remain in Peckham. That simply means that um, Immediately I got the message when I was with Brother, with, with brother Darrell discussing this in Portland uh, and he was trying to encourage or advise me. He said, this is good, this is nice, but it won't reduce your responsibility. Uh, I'm talking from experience. And immediately as I was looking at the administrative office, my administrative office will still remain in Peckham. We have, we have our admin staff and some other admin staff and then I'm still in Bexley. So which means I still be reporting for admin work in Peckham, pastoral work in Bexley, for at least for now. We hope that before long, the administrative office will be relocated um, accordingly. We will request that you please pray for us and continue to show your usual support at your various branches as we all work together to put these changes in place. Thank you so much once again for all your support, and I pray that the Lord will bless you. We now have um, a solo from Sister Faith, Lead Me to Calvary, and then the emblem will be brought in. At the end of that, we have the word of exhortation for the ordinance of um, breaking of bread to be given by Brother Delight. Lead 
me to Calvary. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thoughts from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 through to 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 uh, from verses uh, from verse 23. 
For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. May God bless us this morning. What a privilege we have to be part of the family of God. Glory be to God. We're privileged to be at the camp meeting where God has called to remembrance our ancient landmarks. My prayer is that God would find all of us faithful in that regard. This morning we are also privileged to be part of something that was instituted by the Lord Jesus himself. The Lord's Supper. It is a sacred moment for us as we commemorate an ordinance established by our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. At one time, he was going about his father's business and uh, I, I, I like to imagine that some ushers went up to him and, you know, called him and uh, aside and told him that his mother and, and you know his loved ones were, were waiting for him and were seeking his attention and I just love how Jesus responded to that he says you know he, his true uh, loved ones his relatives the, those that are considered his relations are those who do the will of the father and this morning, we are here to fulfill God's will. May God help us. Amen. This sacred observance really typifies the suffering of our Lord. We remember his death and the sacrifice that he made for us. And this is something that he has instructed us to observe until he comes and by God's grace we'll continue to do so so it is an ordinance we observe as the apostolic faith church and it is something that we believe uh, was instituted like I said by our Lord Jesus Christ I love this church and the reason I love it is because we we believe the Bible uh, from Genesis right through to the last verse. Yeah. And by God's grace, uh, uh, my prayer is that we continue to live as God has instructed us to. So this was an ordinance. Um, uh, it, it was a direction and still is a direction and a command with authority from heaven. Um, so heaven expects us to obey and heaven expects us uh, to carry it out. Um, it was ordained by God himself. It was decreed by God and it shall stand. And uh, one thing we, we have done over the years is continue to do it the way God has instructed us to do so. Uh, 
just like Jesus said here, he, he took the bread, you know. Uh, these are emblems, these are symbols that are employed as expressions of the deeper spiritual meaning. Jesus says, take of the bread. In verse 24, we read there that when he had given thanks, he broke, so he broke the, bear, the bread and said, take, eat of that bread. And he says, this is my body, which is broken for you, and this do in remembrance of me. In verse 25, we read, after the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had stopped saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Glory be to God. Amen. And so that's what we will be doing this morning. God helping us. We are going to take uh, of, of the bread in remembrance of the redemptive sacrifice that Jesus uh, did for us. You know, this was something that was prophesied even long before he came on this earth uh, by the prophet Isaiah. You know, for our transgressions, uh, he prophesied that the Lord will be, will be bruised. And, and indeed it was so. Uh, the Bible tells us that the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes also, we are healed. And we thank God for those blessings. The observance of this ordinance it, it isn't a means of obtaining forgiveness for sins. The, the, the partakers of this, in this ordinance are children of God. Those who already have, have received the forgiveness of sins. You know, those whose, who, whose, whose hearts have been cleansed by the precious blood of the Lamb. Um, so we we, 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 we need to make sure this morning that as, as, we, as we partake of this, we, are truly, we truly have the witness within ourselves that we are indeed uh, the children of God. The Bible tells us very plainly that the Spirit of God bears with, witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. And this salvation is an also salvation. Um, when, when Jesus saves you, he gives you the power you know, to, to live a victorious life. Nobody goes on to teach you, you know, know the Lord. The Spirit of God just gives you that direction within you. And he shows you what is right and what is wrong. Not only does he show you, he gives you the enablement uh, to be able to do what is right. And those are, are the people that God is calling uh, to this wonderful feast this morning. Uh, may God bless us. So partakers should indeed be born again this 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 morning. And if you if if you find this uh, you 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 haven't really uh, experienced the new birth, uh, to, today could be that wonderful day for you. You know, as as we go on with this uh, wonderful feast, uh, the Lord's Supper, you, you you can take time to find a corner somewhere within the campground and 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 and, and call to Jesus, and He'll be faithful to save you this morning. I'm going to read again uh, from the first from from the same chapter. I, I'd like to read from verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. This is a truly a reverent moment for us. Um, it, 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 took, it took Jesus to purchase our redemption. We read in, uh, in the scriptures where uh, you know, John was uh, was troubled, uh, and he he wanted to to know. He was seeking to understand who was going to break the seal. Oh, but glory be to God! When the Lamb, even the Lion of the tribe of Judah, uh, stood up and said, "I would go," 
you know, and he laid down his life for us. Oh, what a wonderful blessing that is. Um, and it is a, a, a sacrifice that God himself has made. Uh, and when we partake of this, we are doing it in commemoration of that sacrifice that Jesus has made for us. He was God, and yet he, he, he didn't count it uh, uh, un, uh, uh, something uh, unworthy to lay down his life, you know, uh, come on earth and, and put on a human body and take on our frailties. Uh, if we turn to Isaiah chapter 53, verse, uh, verse 5, just quickly read from Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, just to remind ourselves of the sacrifice that uh, Jesus himself has made for us as we commemorate his death, his resurrection uh, this morning. I'll, I'll read from verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before the sharers is damp, so he openeth not his mouth. Verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. We all came to experience God's saving grace through this wonderful sacrifice. And it is for this reason that Jesus has said, let us do this. Let us take part of the Lord's Supper and we do it in a remembrance of him but Paul warned the Corinthians that this was a solemn and sacred event to be carried out reverently and focusing on the redemptive work of Christ glory be to God Amen. blessings will indeed accrue to those who follow Christ's command there is healing if we are faithful and we do this in faith believing God will heal the sick among us Amen. in John 13 17 uh, the Bible tells us that if you know the th these things happy are ye if you do them may God bless us as we partake of the Lord's Supper this morning we will now await further instructions God bless you Okay, it's a usual practice to take this on our knees. And I want to advise that please we close the gap so that it will make it easy for um, the ministers that will be serving. Don't let us have some chairs in between. Let us close the ranks that we have and we go on our knees to pray while the ministers gather around here to bless them.
Shall we turn our Bible to Gospel according to St. John, chapter 13? We are reading from verse 1 through to 17. Now, before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved the Son, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knew that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he was come from God and went to God. He rise from supper and laid aside his garment and took it away and guarded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was guarded. Then commented he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, does thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Some of Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said unto him, He that is washed neither not save to wash his feet, but is clean every weight, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garment, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? <clears throat> ye call me Master and Lord. And ye say, Where? Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. 17 and the last. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. We thank the Lord for the privilege we have of observing the ordinance of washing of the saints' feet. The disciples of Jesus, they are just uh, they had a wonderful day because they are just come from the, the Lord's Supper. And Jesus Christ stood from his table. From the countenance of Jesus, they must have realized that the business of that day was not yet over. And they were looking in bewilderment as Jesus Christ removed his garment, laid the garment aside. You see, many times, the thing Jesus did, they did not understand at the point time when he was doing it. They were looking. He laid down his garment, took a towel, gathered himself, took a bowl, poured water in it, and started to wash the disciples' feet. You know, this time, this was different from the usual washing of feet. You know, in the land of Palestine, because of their dusty environment, before strangers enter into any house, they must wash, wash the feet. The disciples had done this before they entered their house. What Jesus was doing at this time was he was instituting an ordinance for his followers. Yeah. He started washing their, their feet and cleaning it with the towel. When you read the term of uh, Peter, Peter said, what are you doing? You are the son of God, the son of the living God, washing my feet. The normal washing of feet that they knew, it was a servant that would wash the feet. Yeah. This is the, our master. Yeah. How can my master be washing my feet? Peter, Peter 
did not want uh, uh, the Lord to wash his feet. And uh, uh, Jesus told him, if I do not wash your feet, you do not have part in me. And Peter, even though he did not understand, he said, Lord, do I do not understand, but I want to have part of you. I want to be part of you. I may not understand, but I want to be part of you. And we see that he was hesitating before. Now, with excitement and enthusiasm, he said, not only my feet, wash every part of my body. Because I want to be all out for you. You know that man, since the day that Jesus Christ called him, he was all out for Jesus Christ. When Jesus asked from them, who do the uh, son of man say I am? It was only Peter said, that said, you are the son of the living God. He said, I want to be part of you. When Jesus, many of us here also, we do not understand many things that we do. But we know because it is the word of God. It is the law command. We want to obey God. We want to do the will of God. We, we, we may not understand now. We will understand later. We know that Jesus Christ is coming again. He is coming to rapture his people. And we want to be part of that rapture. Many things that we do, we do not understand. But we want to obey Jesus Christ in washing the disciples' feet. We have three lessons to learn. Le service, love, and obedience. We believe that as Jesus was washing the disciples' feet, he would have been praying for them. He would have been praying for them because he would look back the good time they have had together. About three and a half years that he had been um, taking them like a, a hen, covering a chicken. And he knew what would be for them. A few hours from that time, they, a few days after that, he knew what would be for them. He knew how they would be scattered. They would be like a, a sheep without a, without a shepherd. And he was praying for them. Praying for them that God should uphold them. Because for that purpose, he came to that world, to the world, that God should uphold them. The same way, when we observe this thing, we pray for one another. Oh, yes. We want to pray for one another that Jesus Christ will uphold us Amen. until he comes. We do not know what will happen tomorrow. We do not know what will happen next month. But we want Jesus Christ to keep us. Amen. As we observe this thing, we want to be praying for one another. The disciple of Jesus Christ and as we do it here also, we, we, have been, we have been experiencing joy, peace, when we observe this, uh, the washing of the saints' feet. And I believe that today, God will uh, bless us abundantly Amen. and put his joy in our heart Amen. as we observe this uh, ordinance. Amen. We wait for further instruction. Okay, we want to go into that joyous exercise now. We have the um, ushers, they're going to draw this curtain. We would like to have the ladies on this side, um, men on this side. Um, once the curtain is drawn, I know our ladies can increase this to come to this end because you are many, you are more than the men. You can take some of these chairs to put there. And we will request the service of the members of the choir to please help in bringing in the um, water and bowl for the saints as we progress in doing this. God bless you. We will uh, start with hymn number 27, CGS 27, please. Forgiving, all I did is it. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him.
Praise the everlasting King. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Praise the everlasting King. Praise Him for His grace and favor to our fathers in this rest. Praise Him still the same forever. Praise Him, go is good to be. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Praise the everlasting name. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him.